Hello, this is Jennifer Raymond, and I'm a brain injury specialist with BrainLink. Today we're going to talk about a little bit of a difficult subject here, abusive head trauma. Uh, we were lucky enough recently to be part of a webinar series that DCS, the Department of Children's Services in Tennessee, has uh, allowed us to partner with them to provide. And that first um, webinar in the series has been concussion, traumatic brain injury, and abusive head trauma. So what we're going to look at here today is uh, part of that presentation about abusive head trauma. Abusive head trauma you may have already heard of or you might be familiar with with another term, shaken baby syndrome. Um, shaken baby syndrome occurs when someone shakes a child and shakes them so hard or an infant uh, that they injure their brain. Um, shaken baby syndrome is a type of abusive head trauma. So it happens in children in ages zero to four, and it happens when someone shakes the child so much, so hard, um, that they are actually causing physical damage to the uh, brain at a cellular level inside the brain. Um, we're going to look just a little bit here about how that happens and how the brain is made up of these little tiny connections called axons. Um, the axon is a real thing, but it's very tiny. It's so small you wouldn't be able to see it with the human eye. Um, the axons are responsible for sending messages in the brain. They carry information. And when there's an injury to that axon, it actually tears and uh, twist and can lead to cell death. It can uh, cause death of the cell within the brain. When someone is injured, they're being shaken really hard and um, it affects these axons by um, killing the cells and by um, tearing that connection that's supposed to take place, it can cause lasting symptoms and some of those symptoms can last a lifetime. So diffuse axonal injury, that's going to be um, diffuse that happens widespread throughout the brain and it's injury to the axons. Um, oxygen deprivation, that can occur when there is a lack of oxygen to the brain, it is cut off from, uh, oxygen is cut off from the brain, and that's also called anoxia. That's another type of um, result that can occur with abusive head trauma. Swelling of the brain. Swelling of the brain is one of the, the scariest um, parts of brain injury. You have your primary injury that takes place, like in this case, the shaking or the actual hitting of the brain inside the skull. Um, it's the skull that injures the brain. So when the, the skull's moving back and forth during this shaking, um, it's bouncing against the inside of the skull that's, that's injuring the brain. The swelling that's the secondary part of that injury is the, the most scary part because um, in the skull, there's only one place if you want to think about it as like an, an escape route in the brain, there's only one um, opening and that's at the base of the skull. And that uh, is the same place where you have your brain stem and your spinal cord. So that's the very important, very crucial part of your brain that controls your breathing and your heart rate. So anytime there's swelling in the brain, it can be potentially life-threatening. Maybe you have heard of the 10-4 bruising rule. Um, I had not heard of it before. We started looking into this to cover abusive head trauma. Um, but maybe if you work with young children or maybe if you're in the medical field, especially pediatric uh, medicine, maybe you've heard of this before. But 10-4, it's very easy to remember. Um, the T-E-N in 10 stands for torso, ears, and neck. So you would be looking for any signs of injury, any bruising on the torso, ears, and neck of a child four years or younger. And then you would be looking for any bruising anywhere on an infant who is under four months old. So keeping these in mind would help someone to know what are good signs to look for um, to if you suspect um, abuse. You might also look for things like an uh, unusually large head or forehead, bulging um, in the fontanelles, the parts of the skull that um, in babies have not yet connected. Uh, this bulging might be more apparent when they are vomiting or when they are crying. Uh, you could look for different sized pupils, 
A retinal bleed would be when there is a red discoloration, red uh, bleeding in the white part, the sclera of the eye. A child not being able to focus, uh, favoring one arm or leg, they might be doing that due to a brain bleed. Um, they might have an injury to the arm or leg, but um, either way, it would be something that, that would be an unusual thing to, to notice and cause you to have concern. Um, stopping smiling, talking, or walking. Some early symptoms of abusive head trauma can also include changes in their interest in eating, vomiting, um, trouble sucking, irritability, seizures, a change in breathing. So maybe that child has had an injury to their ribs that is causing pain when they breathe. If you suspect child, report, child abuse, you can report it. Um, this is the toll-free number here that's provided uh, by DCS. We also have um, their websites that you can go to to make a report, and that's a secure site. Certainly, if there's an emergency situation, you'll want to call 911 immediately. Um, there's also a great website on here for more information through DCS. Injuries that you can't see. Um, when we think of a baby and we think of their head, their head is usually... Um, well, their head's bigger than the rest of their body. So a baby has a disproportionate head size compared to their body. Um, they also have a brain that's made up of more water content than as they age an adult's brain will have. So there's more um, movement inside that skull if you wanna think of it that way. Um, there's a little tiny bit more space for that brain to move, which is bad if you're thinking about a child who's being shaken or moved violently. Um, so if you look at this picture here, you'll see this, um, this baby and the movement of being shaken. Um, the brain is actually bouncing in the skull to the back here that would injure the back of the brain and then forward that would injure the front of the brain. And what I want you to notice is how the neck is hyperextended. So this is not simply a movement forward and back. This is really an overextension. Um, that causes shaken baby syndrome and this type of abusive head trauma that can um, severely injure a child. Um, this can cause a severe neck injury, spinal cord injury, and then bleeding on the brain. And the way that you might notice that bleeding on the brain is that favoring one side or having trouble moving on one side of the body. Later symptoms with abusive head trauma. More than half of the children that are injured before age four will die before they turn 21. And children who are severely injured have a 55% reduction in health-related quality of life. So abusive head trauma is very serious and um, can cause extensive injuries, life-threatening injuries. One of the things you might look for um, down the road in a child who has had abusive head trauma are learning disabilities, um, they, might be, they might have vision problems or blindness. Um, they might have changes in their abilities with speech and language, seizures, cerebral palsy, uh, hydrocephalus, that's um, water on the brain. So that's when there is too much cerebrospinal fluid inside the skull, and that can lead to swelling. And as we just talked about a minute ago, swelling in the brain is always a bad thing. Um, so Abusive head trauma is bad, and it is a scary thing, and it can be fatal. Now, um, last, I want you to just think about who might do this. Maybe in your mind, you automatically have this image of a person who could abuse a child or what kind of person might hurt a child. Um, the person who might be someone who would shake a baby and, and hurt someone in this way might not be exactly what you expect. Um, think about someone who is a single parent, who maybe doesn't have a lot of support as a new parent, um, has very little experience in child care prior to the situation, the injury. Um, maybe they didn't get prenatal care. Now I want you to look at this list over here on the right. These issues can occur with TBI too. So behavioral health problems, a history of domestic violence, low frustration tolerance, that goes hand in hand 
uh, with symptoms for some people with traumatic brain injury. Low educational level, low economics, uh, socioeconomic status, that's all something that you might want to keep in mind and you really want to think um, to ask the question, did this person um, who may have hurt a child experience a traumatic brain injury at some point themselves? So thank you very much for your time and please check out our other webinars in this series.